1693 means we got shots fired at 415 AS. This is a Fox News alert. There's a ton of new information coming out in the Las Vegas shooting investigation, the months long one. Charlie Mann is a documentary filmmaker who's investigating the case. He joins us. But we'll start with former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, who was talking to his sources tonight. Uh, Dan, what have you learned? You know, Tucker, there's two big outstanding questions right now, right? The first is obviously motive. Why does a guy like this uh, engage in the, one of the largest mass murders in American history? Um, and, and although the motive is still unclear, and I can't absolutely confirm anything, I, I believe that there's a high probability in the end you're going to see something that looks like some form of radicalization. Now, what that radicalization was, it's always associated with, of course, Islamic terror, given the threat environment. That may not be it. It may be some kind of political motivation as well. Um, but motive is obviously outstanding. And, and one more quick point on this, Tucker. Um, I don't think the target selection here was random. Uh, the fact that it was a country music concert, um, the fact that it was Las Vegas, I don't think this was random. And I think may, in fact, when this all comes out in the wash, uh, be a factor. And it's one other quick thing on this. The second point, was he alone? Now, it's pretty obvious he was the lone gunman in this case, through, based on all the evidence we have. But that's not what I'm asking. Was he alone or did he have some kind of support structure in place? Um, again, I think when a lot of this gets fleshed out and we see uh, the reports start to become public, I have a really hard time believing that it's going to indicate that he was the only person involved in this. There has to have been some level of the uh, logistical support or operational support somewhere in this. Well, one indication of that, Charlie, are these email accounts that he, that Paddock apparently maintained that we learned about a couple of days ago, from which he sent emails from one to the other, basically addressed to another person. That person's not named, but he was clearly writing to someone else. They were not just notes to himself. What do you make of that? Uh, this is very bizarre, Tucker, and it's really been bizarre since day one. Uh, my understanding after deep research is that he was emailing himself, which kind of adds to the whole mystery of this whole thing. And, of course, the new development is Mary Lou Danley uh, admitted to right. investigators that her prints will be on the ammo. So I think she's in big trouble right now. And this kind of is this instant replay to the Pulse nightclub tragedy where um, the significant other on that case will be going to trial in Orlando March 1st. Very interesting to see what's going to happen with Mary Lou Danley, the girlfriend of Mr. Paddock. So to the two questions that Dan asked, which are obviously key questions, I would add a third, which is did federal or state authorities have any knowledge at all of Paddock? Had they had contact with him in any way? Were they aware of him before the shooting? Do we know anything about that? Not to my knowledge, no. Uh, the FBI has said that uh, they, they now know that there was a lot of ammo in the, uh, the residence of the shooter, which to me is not very revealing and not shocking news to anybody. Right. No, and especially not in this case. Um, so, Dan, do we have any, and I don't want you to speculate or get over your skis at all because it's too important and we don't want to muddy it with things we don't know for certain. Sure. But do you have any understanding of why it's taking so long to get basic information out of this investigation and any indication as to why it seems to be conducted in this kind of haphazard, sloppy way? Um, you know, I do. And I always appreciate your, uh, you, you, you wanting to stick to what we know. I mean, yeah. I think that helps, despite the fact that the government has been, I think, unnecessarily cryptic about this, which has fostered a bunch of conspiracy theories. Um, Tucker, think about it here. Just from on plain speak, there is a very serious economic and financial incentive for a lot of the you know, potential secrets in this case uh, to be kept quiet for a while um, and to keep this off the front pages until the news blows over. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's very obvious. It doesn't take a conspiracy theorist to figure out you're, you're the, one of the major tourist attractions in the world, Las Vegas. There's a lot of outdoor activity on the Strip. You don't want on the front page of every paper uh, from now to perpetuity the fact that you could be the subject to, uh, subjected to sniper fire from a building in the Las Vegas Strip. No, I know. Um, you that, also that's, have, but that's, you know, I mean, big companies should not have influence in criminal investigations. I mean, that's like no, no, justice No, I'm 101. not justifying it. No, no, I think you're right, but you're, you're right. That's clearly what's going on. And I, I don't even want to think that that's true, but it clearly is, and it's distressing. Gentlemen, thank you both for that update.